War Pharaoh is still two months away from release, one of the biggest criticisms already being thrown at it from internet commenters is that it looks like a saga game getting released as a full title. Today we're going to look at the size and scale of the map, and more importantly we're going to look into the promised levels of diversity and depth. With an era as complex and fascinating as the Bronze Age Collapse, we do need to look at more than just the raw size. It's about how history, gameplay, and most of all expectations are shaping people's reactions. You see, Total War Saga series represents a departure from the expansive worlds of Total War of Old, focusing instead on smaller, more specific regions and time periods. It's interesting in concept, but the two Saga releases have met with mixed reviews. Thrones of Britannia was criticized for being too historically accurate to the point of dullness, while the Trojan War themed release was criticized for leaning too heavily into mythology. These criticisms all set the stage for the controversy around Total War Pharaoh. Though it's not a saga title, it is attracting skepticism for its perceived limitations in scope, covering just two or three countries, really, over a mere 50-year period. And it's natural for most of us to immediately compare this to Total Warhammer, with over 80 playable factions, extreme faction diversity, and a map that spans an entire world, but realistically we can't hold any historical title to that standard. Some future game could conceivably cover the entire historical world, but the amount of faction diversity could never match a world with magic and dragons and rat people and multiple flavors of hell demons and even Chinese people all rolled into one universe. By that standard, anything's going to feel limited, because pre-gunpowder warfare in the real world really was just 90% guys with pointy sticks rolling in the dirt with the main change as you look at different parts of the world being the color of people's skin and the color of the dirt they were rolling around in. But I don't want to get too bogged down in series history. We haven't had an official release of the full map yet, but we have seen, I think, all of it in the various previews in one way or another, when we have a pretty good sense of the scope we're looking at here. On the south end, the map covers pretty much all of ancient Egypt, all the way down the Nile, down to deep south Nubia, which is quite nice, as well as the Red Sea coast and a number of western oases. North of that, we have a pretty heavily populated Sinai Peninsula, then the Levant, the eastern Mediterranean coast covering the places even east of the Jordan and Orontes River for a way for ways until it gets into hard desert. And we know the least about the Hittite side of the map, but it seems to go pretty much straight north from there into central Anatolia, covering the heartland of the land of Hatti, and not much more. On one hand, all this feels really tiny. It's basically two nations with some space in the middle, and every single frontier is cut off. That's what really strikes me looking at the map. Canaanites can't cross the Euphrates. Egyptians can't push deeper into Libyan lands. Hittites can't push really anywhere except south. On the other hand, we don't have exact travel times yet, but it looks like an army on land will take upwards of 25 turns to march from the south end to the north. And historically, that that's, takes four years. Assuming they don't stop anywhere, that's unrealistic. So just in scale terms, the map is already pretty large. In fact, it might be too large for history, though it is, I'm sure, well-balanced for gameplay is what it looks like, but it's got a pretty good number of towns and provinces to fill a 300 turn game. And while diversity within the Egyptians or within the Hittites is not inherently huge, each of the three factions are quite distinct, with radically different climates, economies, histories, worldviews, warfare strategies, 
and political systems. Some of that might get compressed a little bit, but also some of those diversities are clearly being brought out in some of the gameplay and unit selection systems. Plus, this was a region full of diversity despite these two major empires. These aren't hegemonizing powers the way that many empires were. And the team at Total War does seem committed to reflecting that through the system of local gods where different gods are worshipped in different places. They have the multiple resources that are concentrated in different parts of the map, and they have regional troops at the very least. Then on top of that, they seem to have put together a fairly complex campaign layer with a fair bit of political stuff available, a modestly busy economy and construction system with real choices baked in, and whatever's going on with the RPG system for generals, and I mean, we'll see how all of that gets implemented, but at least in theory, they do seem to be trying to get a lot of depth out of not necessarily a huge area. Fundamentally, though, I think there are two reasons why the world feels small to many people. Now, first is that a lot of people just don't know about the region and the era, which is a shame because it's absolutely fascinating. I have some intro videos on this era linked below in the video description, plus over 12 hours of deeper Hittite history in the main Oldest Stories podcast. But that part's excusable. Not everybody's an expert in Bronze Age Anatolia or the 19th Dynasty's collapse. I didn't know about any of it until I started learning about it. So what I recommend to you is Go learn about it. It's fantastic. The bigger issue, though, in talking about how big the map is, is where the map is cut off and how there is a complete lack of frontiers that it seems that you can travel into. Now, if I'm being cynical, and sometimes I'm cynical, I would say that this looks like a deliberate cash grab by the corporate types in Creative Assembly, selling an incomplete product with the intention of selling increasingly expensive DLC to open up the rest of the map. And to be sure, there have been criticisms of Creative Assembly's business practices in the past, so I can't and I won't discount this possibility. But if I'm looking at it from an historical perspective, this map that we have for this particular time period, starting in 1207 and running for about 50 years, this map's pretty good. The Bronze Age collapse was not a time of settled societies pushing ever deeper into the frontier. While there weren't actually invisible walls that you just couldn't cross in the desert or on the Euphrates River, the fact is that none of the settled societies managed to actually push on these frontiers during that time. They couldn't. They wanted to, I'm sure, but they couldn't. Trade is collapsing. Food is too scarce in most of these areas to march troops across empty areas. And the threats to the home front, both the civil wars, the civil unrest, and the external threats coming in, they're just too significant to realistically allow the sort of expansion and interaction most of us expect in a total war game. In fact, historically, almost nothing happened between the Hittites and the Egyptians after this point in history, after 1207. So just the idea of the Hittites and Egyptians entering into agreements and interacting with each other, that's already pretty ahistorical, though in a sense plausible if the Hittites had survived a bit longer. However, what the tight map borders allow is for random invaders to show up out of nowhere and hit the settled nations from every angle, with no way for the player to strike back and cut them off at the source. Now this, honestly, it, it kind of sounds frustrating. It sounds like all the miserable parts of the end game doom stacks that have started showing up in some of the other Total War games 
and especially the Hittite Empire, is extremely constricted in a way that's a little bit ahistoric. Well, no, it's more than a little bit ahistorical. But at the same time, the Hittites really were hit from every direction, right at the heart of the empire, all at once in this period. The limited map should make it extremely hard for the Hittites to survive. And for a game centered around the Bronze Age collapse, this is okay. Now, it's not going to be the classic Total War gameplay of expanding into impossibly large empires and then never collapsing. Instead, it will, if well executed, be a life and death struggle for the entire run of the game. This is both historically accurate, and it's something to differentiate this title from the others in the franchise. Not everyone's going to like it, but it is nice to see large studios like this experimenting with things and not just repeating the same formulas, the same time periods, over and over again with slightly better graphics and more restrictive modding and DLC policies. That said, I totally understand the criticism that it looks like a saga game. It's hard for any of us to look at this map and not think about the places that could be added in. And that's going to be the next video. All that frustration vented onto YouTube. It's going to be great. It's going to come out pretty soon, so make sure you're subscribed. But we're going to address a lot of people's questions about why the Total War team might have been absolutely right to not include neighboring civilizations like the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Greeks. But I expect both today's take and the upcoming one to be controversial, so definitely let me know in the comments. From what you've seen, do you think the map is too small? Or just right? Or maybe, maybe even you think it's too big. I don't know. I don't have a response for everyone always in the comments, but I always appreciate the discussion and the feedback. Thank you for listening.